Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Why, hello there. Hello, 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 and welcome to, uh, what is this? Oh, yes, Lynn Cullen Live. Pay no attention to the nomenclature. I'm barely alive today. I'm trying to wake up. It's Tuesday. My sister Susan's in St. Louis. She's probably lying in bed herself, and uh, we'll see. Susan! Yeah, don't give away all my secrets. I know. <laughs> now, I have been up since, uh, you know, it was dark outside and watering. Oh, you were watering. Yeah. I thought you were. Oh, okay. Um, yes, because, uh, well, let's not talk about the weather. It's... No, I'm just saying. It's you know, I'm present. Just, but I'm, no, I'm no, 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 no. I was going to pick up on your watering and start talking about the weather, and then I thought, eh, who cares? And then we'll dispense with the fact that your cardinals have uh, overcome our pirates and now are in sole possession of first place, and I can say, you can have it! Well, by only half a game. Stay right there, guys. Oh, yeah. We intend to do our best. It's very exciting here. I don't care about being in first. We just want to get in the playoffs. It's better to do it if you're a division leader, though. Right. Yeah. So, Sos. Yeah. I was just saying to Jess that, like, it's really odd how when you get up in the morning out of bed, you know, you're rousted by an alarm, let's say. I mean, left to its own devices, your body would allow you to sleep a lot longer than most of us are allowed. I mean, we just are forced out of our beds. And I, each one of us has like a morning ritual that we can do literally in our sleep, right? Because yeah. you so get... you're about to tell me that you did that in your sleep. Well, I think, I, I think, I was just saying to Jess, I think that I realized it this morning as I was going through it that I literally was, there was like three operating brain cells that were conscious, you know, and I was... Doing everything. I was getting dressed. I was feeding the cats. I was up and down the stairs. I was this thing and that thing. But my head was simply, I mean, it's just total muscle memory automatic pilot till I get out the door. I mean, there is, and sometimes it can even persist through the bus ride up the elevator, into the studio, sitting here, and I still don't feel like my entire brain is up and running. I don't know. That's why yeah, people, that's I, why people drink coffee. I'm sort of not like that, oh. actually. I, 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 who have, you know, no good reason except good manners to get up, you know, early every morning. Good um, manners to keep your husband company, you're saying. Right, yeah. right. Um live in such dread of an alarm that I automatically wake oh. up before the alarm. Yeah, alarms are a frightening thing. Uh, alarms make me sick, literally. Yeah, it's no way to wake up. No, Have it, you th- may, it gives, I wake up immediately And get nause- nauseated. <laughs> and, 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 and so, I, so <laughs> I, who have no reason ever to get up, wake up at about 5.15 every... So you don't have to... So you can turn right. the alarm. And off. I can't... And, and when... And when there's no reason for either of us to be awake at that hour, I'm still up you at that hour. But up. here's the good news. I, I like it because that's the time that I, I lie in bed, I read, and, and I allow myself to wake up slowly, which is what you're doing in your sleep. But by the time I'm all done with that, it might be all of seven. Yeah. Well, that's good, though. That's good. That's good. I just, I don't know. Maybe this is something about old age that our heads take longer to wake up than they used to. (laughs) I just feel foggy today. I do. But um, I, I mean, even if the alarm is like a pleasant alarm, like Mm -mm. birds tweeting, Mm -mm. it doesn't do it. Yeah. Okay. If it's really for me. It just causes terrible, yeah, a, yeah. an immediate anxiety reaction. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess what it is. Well, sure, it is. Uh, well, that says something. If you, your first moments of consciousness... Oh, uh, my God, it's another day. And it's immediate <laughs> nausea. And, and, 
an anxiety. I've always been that way. I know I you have. I have to remind myself. That That's right. Susan, when we were children, was waking second. she was sick almost every morning. And uh, as far as I can recall, rarely attended school. I don't feel well. And I guess she didn't. I so, didn't. I really didn't. No, and mother I even you. put me in the hospital to find out what was wrong with me. And they never found anything. No. But I submitted to, you know, that whole upper and lower GI battery of tests at the age of, like, six. <laughs> and I think, and, you know, now I recognize that what was wrong with me was, you know, just pure anxiety. I was terrified of going to school. Yeah. Jeez. What a mucked up bunch we are. So anyway. So anyway. I was shy. I was painfully shy. I don't think that's shy. I don't think that's shy. I think that has to do more with... uh, Okay, I was anxious. I was painfully anxious. (laughs) I think it has to do with fear of performance or rejection or competition or whatever because I mean that's what school Getting seemed the crap to be. Eaten out of me. <laughs> whatever. I mean whatever. That's all. That's it. Um Okay. So Susan, I've actually kept my streak of relatively uh easier going shows. Um I'm I'm still on it, so this is day seven. Day seven. And I think we're going to get screwed today uh, because there's nothing but bad news. <laughs> but there's always nothing but bad news. That's always the case. However, and I don't want to talk about MC. Oh, well, then we're really screwed. <laughs> I was going to use MC for for uh, first of all. OK. All right. I, I just want to ask this. MC is Miley Cyrus. I, I just want to ask this. What exactly is twerking? Uh, it's um, this. It's when you wait, 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 wait. Now wait. Jess is ready to answer, but Susan, wait, Susan, let me, wait, let me see. Susan, do you know? Or are you about to BS? Well, us? no. I saw, I saw an explanation of it. it's a jerky sort of, you know, dumb dance is what it is. Okay, I think it's jazz. What would you say twerking is? Um, it's basically shaking your butt. It's, but like, I don't think that's on. Oh, shaking, right, it is shaking your butt. It's shaking your butt? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. In different ways. So, like, you could shake it like that. Or- oh, <laughs> hey, do that in front of the camera. <laughs> no. Jess is up there saying, so you could shake it like that, or you could shake it like that. What? Well, of course you, you can could, shake like- do it against the wall. Do it against the wall. <laughs> you like, you, you can, can put your hands, like a handstand, and you put your legs against the wall, and then you like gyrate. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, God. Oh, I see. It's the end of Western civilization. No, I mean people have been shaking their butts since the dawn of Western civilization. Yes, but we used to do it in a way that was rhythmic oh. and and and. Is that it? Entertaining. We just didn't have a word for it. I suppose you've got to twerking. But so, yeah, but see, she said you could also you do a handstand and get your feet up against the wall and then do it. That's really impressive, which immediately, you know, get an image in your head. And then I remember this other unbelievable image I saw of a woman doing a yoga handstand, you know, I guess where you do it on your, you know, sort of tripoded, uh, yeah, you just do a headstand, Susan. Yes. And, um. Is this a handstand or a headstand? Headstand, whatever, it's a okay. headstand, she's upside down. Yeah, and she, with her, with a tripod, right. Yeah, the essentially making arm. a yes. tripod arm, I think. I can't quite recall it, but she is, and she's, you know, straight up in the air, and there is a baby. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> there is a baby sitting right next to That's her. That's the Israeli who's, thing. It's, who's grabbed her breast and is nursing. He, she pulls her shirt up. <laughs> well, yeah, she doesn't have it. Yeah. So her, she's in a, and she's nursing her child while upside down. Laughing. I know she's in the midst of a yoga. Oh, as I recall, there was laughter. No, no, no. 
I don't think, but I think all of this is very bizarre. Well, this is up on YouTube. Anybody can see it. I'm sure if you, uh, if you Googled uh, yoga lady nursing, it would come right yeah, up. Yes, it's, right. It's an Israeli thing. It's very funny. What do you mean? I said that to mother. She thought that was funny. I That's heard. Old. I heard that somehow her she was banned from some site. This woman, some people took great offense. Um, so we've got twerking now. We've got uh, upside down breastfeeding while doing yoga poses. That's just multitasking, is what it is, right? Yeah. And um, in regard to MC, who we're not talking about. I did, however, note um, a number of criticisms of her and the entire show in regard to it being either racist or, and here's from the New York Times, of the whole show, uh, the show being the uh, MTV Video Music Awards, uh, which people have pointed out is odd since MTV doesn't even show videos anymore. Uh, this was a banner year for clumsy white appropriation of black culture. Mm. Well, I would argue that every year is a banner year for clumsy white appropriation of black culture and right. music. Isn't it? That's all yeah, that it is. I would think is. so. I mean, if Why we was this... you know, go back to the Beatles and the Stones who thought that they were doing, you know, black, black R&B. Well, why Why this? Why, well, I wonder what this year uh, made uh, the New York Times critic think it was even worse than usual. Here's something from Judy Jody Rosen, <clears throat> who writes for Vulture, whatever that is. Uh, and in regard specifically to MC, her act tipped over into what we may as well just call racism, a minstrel show routine. Uh, and she says it gives minstrelsy a postmodern careerist spin. Cyrus is annexing working class black ratchet culture. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. That, and then she explains it. The potent sexual symbolism of... No, no, that's not what it is. She's, she's uh, annexing working class black ratchet culture. The, po the potent sexual symbolism of black female bodies uh, to the cause of her reinvention. Now, she was. Her backup singers in that horrible song were black women wearing, like, things that enhance their... Uh, like their boobs and their and their butts, and I guess so. I you so saw. I don't know. I just uh, all I have to say about any of this is I'd rather be talking about the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> That is. That was. That was such a. That was such a. It took. Yeah. That's okay. All right. We hear you. That's it. No more of that. You're probably speaking for, although we'll, we'll not talk about the Kardashians, although I must say that sitting in um, a waiting room the other day, I did read that uh, Kim is very concerned about her post-baby body and getting it back. Well, she's allowed herself to be seen. Oh, she has. Uh, yes, yes, okay. and and they've and they've released a photo of the baby. I can't believe we're having this conversation. It's a cute baby. No, we're not. Their I'm sure it'd be very cute. cute. Looks looks exactly like Kim and Kanye. Actually, you know, just like he, it should look. One second you go, oh, he looks just like Kanye. She looks just like Conway, Kanye, and the next second you're going, no, she looks just like. <laughs> and very cute. And what? This is the poor baby who's named North. Yeah. Northwest. Oy. All right. We'll stop. And that then takes us to Syria. <laughs> Are you, ah, you sure you don't want to talk about Miley Cyrus and the Kardashians? Oh, equal abominations, I'll tell you. Well, no, but I, I, I'll tell you what's interesting is that Ann Curry is, you know, slowly you know, going, elbowing her way back to the fore by being, you know, on the front lines in Syria, tweeting pictures of, you know, children and enlisting. USA Today was very impressed with her. 
and and, and it's just funny the way Lauer is is sinking in quicksand, and Curry keeps you know coming back. It's sort of boy, there's a, the media is not going to let is is going to is going to uh, keep this going, and I think it's interesting the way it happens. Well, this is interesting only if you watch NBC, and I don't. So I hear you though. No, I mean, I wouldn't have thought it was this interesting, but it's not just, it's Vanity Fair did a huge article about it. I keep reading, you know, other periodicals keep reporting on it, and I'm going, what? No, because it involves the iconic morning television show and how uh, she was ignominiously and rather cruelly and tearfully booted out and blamed for their sagging ratings. And, uh, and now, um, you know, Matt Lauer is, is supposedly the villain of the piece, and so there's a soap opera going on. Well, of right. course media love that stuff. And who knows uh, where the truth Lies, but I'm. You know, she's got a better gig now than sitting in some god awful I mean, studio. I tell, I'll tell you where the truth lies. The truth lies is she wasn't. That that wasn't her job. That she wasn't good at it. She was just because she has this one sort of ultra empathic way of looking at things, and and it doesn't make for a good lead chairperson. She was better in the news desk and better doing what she does now. Well, she's a little too empathetic, a little too cloying and feminine, if you get my drift. So is empathetic a word, or is it empathic? Oh, Am I keeping us away from Syria? (laughs) That's okay. Empathetic or empathic. Have I been using... You're probably right. Hey, look and see if there's an empathetic. I think pathetic doesn't have an empath in front of it. Well, why would that be, though? Well, it's just one of those things that slips in. Empathic, I know, is a word. Yeah, I do, too. Empathetic. Empathetic is a word, too. Miriam Webster says so. Miriam Webster says so. <laughs> now, Funk and Wagnalls might think something else. But me, <laughs> Miriam Webster. What does it say? Is, what, oh. is it the same definition as empathic? Em- okay, wait a minute. Empathetic is... Em- that's your cue. I'm looking up empathic. Oh, now she's on to empathic. Okay, that's good. That's good. No, no, no. No, no, no. We just want the definition of either or or. I bet they mean the same damn thing. Right. What is empathetic? Empathic. Whatever you got there, Jess. What is it? Why don't they have a definition? What? They don't have a definition. She looks like an old person trying to read something. <laughs> she, her nose is like up to... The, She looks like the opposite of an old person. You know, an old person trying desperately to get as far away as they can from it. She's like on it. She's on it, and she still can't find it. the synonyms are the same. Okay, the synonyms are the same. It means the same. Empathic or empathetic. And now that you say that empathic is sounds better because it's softer. Empathic. All right. Okay. Empathetic is usually just a variant of empathetic which means characterized by empathy. Some dictionaries, especially American ones, list empathetic as the, vari- as the standard word and empathetic as the variant. No, but while you the just shorter said- word is indeed the original, empathic. empathetic has prevailed probably due to an, an analogy with sympathetic. See, I think that's what it is. To the ear, you hear the word pathetic, that makes sense, and you put the... And I, I, I think it just came from a misusage. Empathy. And empathic is the word. Oh, oh, so you know more than Miriam Webster all of a sudden. Just a minute. It says both are okay. Em- so sympathy, sympathetic. Empathy, empathetic. Sympathy, sympathic. No. I don't know. Everybody, just so communication takes place. That's right. That's right. What word have we learned today? We have learned one word thus far, and it is what? Twerking. That is correct. It is twerking. <laughs> Which, uh, 
striving to keep to keep the over sixty set set relevant. Well, if not relevant, at least in the you know in the mix. I mean, it just at least comprehending. Speaking of which, did you hear that iPhone just might be willing to buy back your old four? Four S or for or any old one, and you know, like give you a couple hundred dollars toward a new one. And if you're, even if you're, you know, yeah, whatever, we're going to pay two fifty for it, so you might get the why new do they want to? Why do they want to do that? I have no idea. <clears throat> no, I haven't heard that. I can't deal with the gizmos I got. I really can't. <laughs> Which is why you have a fourteen, fifteen, twenty-year-old computer. Yeah. And um, why I'm reluctant to get the new one I know I need. And why I'm reluctant to get a Kindle. <clears throat> and why I'm reluctant to get all this stuff. I don't even have a DVR, for God's sakes. And yet I was screaming at two old lady friends of mine the other day who don't text or who, d- who don't. I said to one, you've got a smartphone, don't you? Yes, but I don't pay for texting. And I said, well... Um, I said, there have been many times when I've wanted to simply tell you something very quickly, don't want to interrupt you, I want to text you, and knowing I can't annoys me. Also, knowing I can't means that sometimes I have refused to call you or email you. Um, so. Merely because you're abstinent. Absolutely. I just want it. It's easier. And it's what people are doing now. And she simply refuses. She says, I will do it when I feel that I, I don't know. She said, when it, it becomes apparent that, I said, how does it become apparent? You don't know how many people are simply not getting in touch with you. You don't know. You're out of the loop. Yes. To quote Don Rumsfeld, we don't know what we don't know. Well, you're getting close to Syria again. (laughs) Oh, PJ just sent me a yoga headstand, which is different, but he said this one is actually for Jess because it is a kitten doing a (laughs) yoga. All right, before we make some, okay. some of the people, especially men in the audience, sick, we're going to take a quick break, and we shall return and, damn it, get into something of some substance. Ah, uh, there goes your record. Well, there have been a few moments of substance. I mean, you can have substance and be entertaining, too. All right, go take a break. Actually, when we come back, I'll be standing on my... My head. More is on the way with Lynn Cullen Live. Les Ludwig, your independent, self financed, clean candidate for mayor of Pittsburgh. You've heard the saying, same old. If we don't change what we're doing, we can only expect the same results. Let's look at what the Democratic Party leadership of your lifetime is asking you to do on Election Day. They want you to forget that they and Ravenstahl have not lived up to minority contracts and the jobs involved in it. If government promises work and jobs and wants to leave it for the next candidate, will it ever get done? How can we trust Peduto and especially the leadership when they continue to act this way? Are they hiding something worse than Harper's misdeeds? Vote November 5th and remember, same old. Embrace change and work willingly with it. Think outside the party's box. Make Les Ludwig your mayor and join his march to clean government and keeping promises. Go to BarkBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. This week, 50% off tickets to the Pittsburgh Irish Festival. Supplies are limited. BergBargains.com. Pittsburgh's best bargains. BergBargains.com. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. Uh, Okay, welcome, uh, welcome back. Um... I happened to uh, see the new Woody Allen movie last night. Oh, I saw it. Blue Jasmine. 
And I thought it was a tour de force performance by Ms. Kate Blanchett. Yes, I did too. But, but you, what did you think of the movie? I don't know. You didn't like the movie. I just... I thought it was pretty good. Movies are so terrible these days that as movies go, I thought it wasn't bad. I didn't think it was um, good, and I and and or as good as it could be. I I I found um, well, this is it. It it is heavily derived from street. Well, yeah, obviously, but I mean that's okay. It's just heavy, heavy, heavy. She plays a Blanche Dubois. Character. Yeah, I just found that distracting, actually. Oh, you did? Well, yeah. Well, in that regard, it was like an homage of sorts. No? It was... But I thought she was... What She's a, incredible. What, what a tough role. I thought all the acting. I thought, I thought her sister was incredible. I thought the acting was better than the vehicle. I don't have any fault with any of the acting. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, we're... Uh, that's, go see it. That's I would absolutely say go see it. By the way, just so you all know, it's not a comedy. Um, no, I it's mean, not there, a comedy. There are people that will sit through a whole movie, and because they decide that Woody Allen only does comedy, they'll insist that it's a funny movie. There's a scene or two you could say is funny, but no, it's not funny. As a matter of fact, I mean... It's tragic. It's tragic, and when it's over, you feel you've been socked in the stomach. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. But when I walked out, I heard people say, boy, that was funny, and I'm thinking, what movie were they? <laughs> but who? Andrew Dice Clay is really a good actor. Yeah, yeah. He just, you know, he got booted. He chose the wrong kind of comedy at exactly the wrong day, you know? And I don't, he got drummed out of the business. I don't remember. He was doing what? He was just... He was doing terribly misogynistic comedy. Mm-hmm. And when hasn't that been a riot? No, it was... There was... He just picked the wrong moment in time, and he got uh, roared off center stage. Well, he um, he has returned as a... I don't know what it is. It's interesting how... I, I've said this before, how comedians so often are really good actors. I'm serious. It's just like one after the other. Turns out to be a good actor. Well, from I mean, think of all the Saturday Night Live people, from, from uh, Bill Murray to... Um, uh, I mean, perhaps it takes a good actor to do... Comedy? comedy. Well... Yeah. You know, if you look at the personal lives of my, of a lot of these guys, they're acting funny when they don't really feel it. Well, yeah. I mean, as I've often said, the two people, two professions I don't want to interview are politicians and comedians, <clears throat> because both are deadly dull. And you wouldn't think a comedian would be dull, but man, alive are they ever. They're dull and hostile and depressed. Yeah. Unless they're on. And they ain't going to be on on your show because that. I remember Don Rickles was on the show once and he actually said, what the hell am I doing on your show? Well, that was probably him, you know. Doing no, his kind of no, I think he really was thinking that. And I, and I thought, I don't remember if I said it, but I remember thinking, you're on my show because obviously your career is on a, in a tailspin, buddy boy. Don't complain to me. Um, okay, so <laughs> for those who uh, work out and who like to um, lose weight as well, I came upon this in the New York Times today, and it's a great little tip. Do you know what you should drink within an hour after a workout? Coffee. Jess says coffee. I thought, no, coffee is before. You can have coffee after. No, she she guessed coffee. What do you want to guess? Uh, ask what you mean other than water? Well, why are you taking water off the... Okay, uh, other than water. Uh, uh, Coke. (laughs) 
Wrong. Both wrong. You won't believe this. Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. Listen to this. Who knew? In multiple studies, people who drank chocolate milk within an hour after working out had higher muscle fuel stores, less body fat, and a greater overall physiological response to exercise than those who drank water or a sports drink. Yippee! I'm going to go get some. Oh, I, I know. actually have some in my refrigerator. Chocolate milk! I always thought of that as a decadent thing. You can go get some. Oh, yeah, and you drink. can get, and, and, you know, and there are several varieties just waiting there to be poured out. They don't say why that, you know, it does it, but um, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Well, the, the body metabolizes certain things much differently right after exercise. I mean, they say that's the proper time to eat, you know, carbs <clears throat> and stuff like that because they'll get processed. And so there you have it. Now I'm, ex- now I'm going to sneeze. Did you read the article about sneezing? There was something about sneezing it. about how some people always sneeze like three times. They can't well, just I, do one. Bad news. I sneeze about six. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. And, uh, no, go. I'm, I don't I okay. think I'm okay. Um, some people only sneeze once. I know somebody who once he sneezes, you might as well just go shopping, come back, and hope it's over by then. 700,000. And I, I didn't read the whole article, but it, they said it, they think it's genetic. Well, they, they didn't really. I found the answer uh, Not very, mostly unsatisfying. Wait, uh, hey, Sue, just heck, just heck. Let's get a, it, which I get like a, co- much, get a call. A we want to get a call in. Hello? Caller? I knew that. I knew it. What happened? Well, I don't know. They hung up. They hung up. You heard the click. Susan didn't hear me trying to get in. That's odd. I heard odd. you eventually when you started yelling at me. Well, because I was I was talking normally and you just kept talking. So I, there must be something that you, oh, I don't know, whatever. Who knows? Well, anyway, so waiting for whoever that was to call back. Here's the sentence I liked. One inherited kind of sneezing. So there is one inherited kind. Photo. Photic sneezing occurs upon sudden exposure to bright light. It has been given a catchy acronym, ACHU syndrome, derived from a longer term, autosomal dominant compelling helioophthalmic outburst. Oh, come on. ACHU. <laughs> upon bright light, you start sneezing? Yeah, well, I, I know that people like that. Some people <laughs> sneeze in reaction to cold. I sneeze because of histamines. Yeah, I, I'm, I do too. That's the only thing that gets me going, I think. I think. Okay, so, uh, Susan, I don't think we can avoid this. Okay, Syria. Yeah, um, I've got a number of questions. I'm throwing them out, and, and I, I, I'm not taking any sides. I'm just throwing them out. Here's a, here's a question I have, and, and maybe some of you have heard people talking. The caller. Let's try it again. Hello? Hi. Hi. Gosh, I got total static when I called before. That's why I had to hang up. Oh. oh. It was just like a mush of sound. Well, how are you doing now? Is everything okay? Yeah, now I can actually hear. Okay. Okay. You were talking about chocolate milk before, and all I could think of was all the people who have uh, stomach problems. And then I thought, geez, lactate even makes a chocolate milk. How oh, it does? That? Oh, so you, if you're lactose intolerant, you still can have your chocolate milk? Yeah. yeah. That's oh, cool. That's great. Yeah. Is that that what... means even I can do that. Well, <laughs> good. I'm really glad. Everybody, <laughs> boy, chocolate milk sales are going to Skyrocket in Pittsburgh I know. I've today. got to run and tell my brother because, yeah. you know. Really? That's, that's Chocolate like right milk? It, it's such a treat. So thank you. Sure. Okay. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> and now, back to you Syria. You know, the only time that I would drink chocolate milk was 
after when we were kids at Hebrew school. I knew you were going to say that. Well, that's when you drank it too. Well, you know what? I've I went between the chocolate milk and the orange drink. Orange juice. It wasn't juice. It was drink, orange which was drink, better. Right. So, uh, Susan, it's weird that we both had that memory because I don't think our mom ever had chocolate milk in the house. No. Um, so it was a real treat, and we had to go to after school two days a week. We would go to. More school, Hebrew school, for two hours. Two hours of Jeez. learning nothing. Hebrew. Well, neither of us can speak Hebrew. No, we, but we can read the characters. Yeah, big deal. So, um, but one of the things they would do for all us poor kids who just gotten out of a full day of school and having to do two hours more is we would, they had um, pastries. And uh, chocolate milk and <laughs> orange Pastries, drink. We read donuts and long johns. Long johns. So we would pig out <clears throat> and then go in and be bored silly for two hours. So, that, yeah, that's my memory, too, of chocolate milk. And if we wanted chocolate milk, the only way you could have chocolate milk in our house was by dumping Hershey's syrup in white milk right. and stirring it, which does yield chocolate milk. Doesn't it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Same same thing, essentially. Okay, so back to Syria. <clears throat> Here's my question. Um, I, I want to understand why the world has decided that there are ways of killing people which are okay, and ways of killing people that are not. That there are ways of killing people that are not morally reprehensible, and there are ways of killing people which are. Well, the old ways are better. That is all well, I'm thinking. The ways we know, we accept. The ways that are new and scary we call morally reprehensible. I want to ask, is there any difference? I mean, there's no difference to the victim. They're dead. Death by being bombed, death by being gassed, death by uh, whatever. I, I just, I'm unclear, except that it's new. Um, because if you were to, add, and then they say, they call it, chemicals, a weapon of mass destruction. Well, ask the people of Dresden in the 1940s <laughs> whether or not regular ordinary old bombs dropped from planes aren't weapons of mass destruction. I don't understand the agreed upon nomenclature that the world uses. And I, I understand the horror of chemical weapons or biological weapons or nuclear weapons. But I don't quite understand the categorization of one form of lethality as this will not stand to the other form of, of lethality where we don't even, you know, we stand on the sidelines and say, that's really terrible. Why don't you stop that? I don't quite get it. And I, does anyone ever bring that issue up, Susan? No, because they skipped right over that and went to, well, you know, we, I mean, ever since we began to draw lines, you know, they've made these absurd. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm no, sure I'm not the saying is, I, yeah, but it I started with it started with the atomic bomb, and that was a <clears throat> weapon that was just so horrific, so horrific <clears throat> that it that it became something that to do it was you know inappropriate. I understand that too, and, and then and then we started deciding which kind of dead was worse. Um, I'm asking. Nobody, yeah, okay. 
But just so you understand my question, and I haven't, I have avoided listening to prolonged discussion or even reading much about what we should do, why we should do it, blah, blah, blah. Because, in fact, anything we do here, whatever it is we are now going to do in the next few days, um, won't change a damn thing. No, and, I, and you so know, my I, question is, how come everybody agrees that we're supposed to do something? Well, I think that's that's the misfortune of being um, the acknowledged and self-proclaimed uh, leader of the free world. Correct. That's yeah. right. Well, we got the means, we got the status, we've got we're the big daddy, and the big daddy has to act. So that that I understand, <clears throat> but we are acting to show the world's horror at these part this particular method of death when tens of thousands of other Syrian men women and children have been killed in the last few years and the world didn't demand that we do anything i i just i find it quizzical strange and how there's no one bothers to explain why this is. So it's okay. I, you know, you get my drift. I just, yeah, I, I'm blown it. away by and, it. And, I'm blown and, away by it. I mean, you know, it's the question is when, it, when, how many people does a despot get to kill before the world decides that that's too many now? So you do. You clearly get a. Uh, you know, some freebies in there. Well, okay, that's my first question. Uh, my second question is, if the world expects us to do something, and that something has to do with firing missiles or something at who knows what targets, uh, which, again, will not have any measurable impact on this civil war that's going on there. Well, what if we dropped it on a side? That's my next question. <laughs> Why? Why don't we just be honest about it and take them out? Here's what I exactly right. How about we got these drones, everybody's freaking about our drones, our drones can target somebody and bango. Well, you know, honestly, in well, the name well, of the then people, why don't, as long why, as... Why don't we take Assad out because you know why? It's against U.S. law. It's against yeah, well, it international law. But we can you don't want people taking out our president. No, but you can target indiscriminate. Like we're going to target something, somebody, some group is going to die. Uh, something. Well, that's okay, but we can't target the guy most responsible for the carnage. Now, again, explain that to me. You did, because we I don't did. want somebody I mean, doing I, it to you us. You know, that's why, because there, there are people on so, the other side <laughs> with a mindset, not ours, that would say that Obama and W and, you know, and, and every president for the last, you know, several back has been responsible for the death of millions of people and should be taken out. The fact that we have higher capabilities to do so is, you know... Yeah, but that's not... I mean, limited. Yeah, exactly. Uh, ten years from now, uh, everyone will have a drone in the garage. <clears throat> it's true. All right. Well, those are, those are two of my biggie questions. Anyway, we got to take a break. If anybody has any answers, I'd appreciate them. We'll be back. Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Confusion ever someone or have sudden... Have you ever had sudden confusion, trouble speaking, or understanding someone? It could be one of the five signs of stroke. Sudden weakness or numbness of the face, arm, or leg. Sudden trouble with vision in one or both eyes. Suddenly having trouble walking or difficulty with balance. Or a sudden intense headache that comes out of nowhere. Don't wait. Call 911 immediately. Time lost is brain lost. Find out more at PowerToEndStroke.org. Brought to you by the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Come to Littles for all of your back-to-school needs. Littles has everything for all ages to stay in style for this upcoming school season. 
Check out the large selection from Doc Martin, Steve Madden, Ugg, Clarks, Lely Kelly, New Balance, and much, much more. Don't forget to come visit this season's colorful handbag selection as well. Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store, 5850 Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. This week's Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for the annual Steeler issue. Plus, City Paper's special auto guide pullout with all the hot dealers to buy your next car from. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone with GPS-enabled listings at citypapermobile.com. Now, it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Okie dokie, okie dokie. We're back. So, anyway, so was, that's it. Yes. I don't know. I, I, I remember I had some other questions, and now I've lost my interest. I, I'm just so weary of all of it. Isn't that, I, you know, I guess we need, we all need some respite from the absolute imponderables that uh, or actually they're not imponderables they're ponderables that geopolitics throws up in front of us constantly I just I anyway hey we got an email from Chris about sneezing thank you Chris I consider that a lifeline <laughs> Chris writes I have sneezed at bright light since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You too, Jess? Mm -hmm. Huh. Looking at the sun or a really bright light bulb. I have hazel colored eyes, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Well, I have hazel eyes as well, and I do not sneeze at bright light. But uh, I used to have brown eyes, but now I have hazel eyes too. Well, as you age, Susan, your eyes lighten. I'm if you live long enough, you'll look like an albino. You'll have pink eyes. Oh, my um, my flight attendant, last plane I was on, was an albino. Yeah. That's got to be a hard way to live. It is hard. Well, it's just because you really do look odd. Well, and it comes... With other, with you know, some real, real issues, other physical you know, issues, uh, blindness and uh, really, you know, yeah. other things. Boy, it's, he was... it's very, it's hard. Yeah, it's not a benign thing. So, but that... I got a whole family of of white squirrels that live in the neighborhood. They're interesting. Yeah, I wonder if the other squirrels like are nice to him. They don't seem. They seem to scamper around like just just like, like a regular else. squirrel. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, so I don't know. I, I I have so avoided all serious talk that the little bit that we just did has made me un unhappy. Well, part of it is is because there's just. I mean, there's a clear right to wrong, but it's in. It, a clear wrong to right. A clear wrong to right, but it's we live in a time when there's no there's no way to do it. I mean, obviously, the obvious answer is to take out this 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 vicious murderer. But that would be something that the world community would howl, right? Isn't that odd? Yeah, we'd rather sacrifice. This, this comes from the days when the only people that counted were the the, 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 the kings. chiefs and the <laughs> and, and the and the monarchs, and everybody else was. Wait know, a minute! Wait a minute! But that's you know a poker chip. But Sue's, you, you would you like to revisit that sentence because you made that sound like that's hit in the past. No, well that's what I'm saying. I, it, it, it's it's just it's absolutely no different now. No, no, no. These, There's. Some lives count, and even a murderous person, uh, if he's head of state, I guess you, you, you give him he's a... He's just playing his chips. The thing is, I mean, seriously, for people who want us to do something about this horror, I've never heard anybody explain what the hell it is we are to do. You can't even take sides in this. Because as repulsive as Assad is, 
The other side is filled with people of such potential repulsiveness. Yeah, that there's you, nobody, there's absolutely, this is a people inhabited by, by, by bad guys, which is happening <clears> repeatedly. <throat> Just people who are, have the misfortune of living, trying to live their lives, where these, you know, tribal warfare is going on. Well, it's all over the Middle East. It's all over the Middle East. And it's just, again, and I mean, and, you know, it, because we're looking at Syria this moment, I mean, try being a Coptic Christian in Egypt right now. Try being almost anything in Egypt right now other than somebody who does exactly what they're told. Do you see that that, that the military there is rounding up Everybody. It sounds exactly like a fascist regime. They are rounding up anyone who's uh, like a trade unionist. They're rounding up any liberals. They're going after intellectuals. And they're going after, of course, the Muslim Brotherhood. And interestingly enough, they're accusing these lefty types of being in cahoots with the Muslim Brotherhood. Excuse me? I mean, just insanity, craziness. I, you yeah, know. I mean the <clears> only <throat> the only stable state in the whole region is Israel. And yeah, then yeah, and that ain't so stable. No, <clears> but <throat> I mean, you know, it, no. Well, no, the only stable states are ones that um, have autocrats who are still in power. Right. Uh, from Jordan. Well, Jordan more benign. Yeah, Jordan with a more benign dictator to our eyes. Uh, the Saudis and the Emirates. You know, the yeah, they're in line because <clears throat> whatever, their people are, are kept comfortable as opposed to what the folks in Egypt are kept. I don't, I don't know. Boy... If there's a place in the world you don't want to be born. Okay, I'm going to give you a choice. You are about to be born. You can be born in the Middle East, Russia, or China. Where do you choose? Well, I'm going to pick Russia or China. Well, I know, yeah, but which I can, would... I can <clears throat> get an education and get out. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, my God. We have an emailer who says, I have a sneezing fit whenever I enter Walmart. Mm. Well, I think... That makes sense. Well, I think that's telling you something. Stay out. I'm allergic to Walmart, too. Oh, Marge is so happy. Woo! She writes, after my workout on the stationary bike, I am having chocolate milk. <laughs> you are so informative. Have a great day. Go Bucks. I agree. We don't need first place. Just get to the playoffs, Marge. Okay. Do we need? Do we? Do we know how much chocolate milk we're allowed to have? No, but I'm sure it's not the whole quart. Generally, don't you think that eight ounces seems to be what people say is the legitimate Yeah, but pour? nobody drinks eight ounces. That's, that's <coughs> a, it's too little? Yeah. You're usually, you're usually drinking 10 to 12 ounces. Well, it, the article did not go into that. See, so. that's the problem with these articles. I know. Everybody's going to get fat drinking chocolate milk. All right, after well, the- I'm just suggesting that those who are rushing to their chocolate milk things, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Google how much chocolate milk was used in the study. Oh, in a study? But just to hold down costs, it'll be like four ounces. It will. Yeah. So, um, uh, the, mm, e, ooh. I'm... I don't want to talk about that. Excuse me, no. I'm talking to myself. I mean, you know, I was going to say to lighten things up, we could talk about, uh, you know, the fact that suddenly raping women seems to be sport all over that region as well. 
Well, no, India is the one that's really it, in the news. India is big, but you know, <clears throat> don't go, don't go to biz, um, business to Dubai. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is not isolated. Well, also speaking of that, um, it was um, what yesterday was like National Women's Freedom Day or something. It was the anniversary right. of the. The 93rd anniversary of women's, yes, because that was in the yeah, maybe, bleh, right to vote. And um, I'm vaguely remembering a column I think I read yesterday, Gail Collins in, in the New York Times, when she had an um, anecdote about a woman in the 70s. This was the 70s, who couldn't get a credit card. In her own name. It had to be her husband's name. And, you know, when I think of the 70s, <laughs> that seems like yesterday. Just because I was married in the early 70s. I mean, so, I, yeah, okay. Somebody said the other day, well, why didn't you keep your name when you got married? And I said, it wasn't even on the radar screen when I got married that you could keep your name. By the no, time, it was on the radar screen when I got married. When you time. were, and you were married, what, about three years later or something? Uh -huh. Yeah, it was then. But in 1972, it sure hadn't made it onto my radar screen. I didn't even know that was a possibility. And in that time, it also, I mean, my God, there were, you couldn't, you couldn't, a woman couldn't get a credit card? A woman, sometimes you couldn't have your own checking account still? You needed See, your... That doesn't make sense to me, though, because I had my own checking account, and I had my own credit cards, and perhaps this was a woman who didn't have any... No, she did have a job. Income. She did have a job. Or she had some income. If she had a job, income. then that doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. Banks, whatever the issuing bank would have been, or might have said, it's got to have the husband's name. It was very recent that women began getting these rights to well, own a as, home. As I like to, to remind people, when our grandmother was born, she didn't have the right to vote. Well, that's true. Yeah. You know, this is uh, the, the, our ability to vote is very recent. Well, you could of, almost, our mother. Our mother was born just four or five years after women right. finally got the right to vote. And somebody pointed out, and I didn't see it, that the, the, when, when the amendment was ratified, <clears throat> the day it was, it was not the lead story in the New York Times. <laughs> it was not. I don't know what was, but it was not. And... Uh, it's amazing, amazing. So there was this. No, I, I, there know. was a sense. Um, I just wanted to say that with the march in Washington the other day, um, I guess Al Sharpton, when he was speaking, was saying that to, he was talking to young black people and people who had gone to blacks who had graduated from colleges who were doing well, and he was saying, "Don't you ever think that you did this." on your own. All the people who came before you, who bled, who died, who all that are the ones who broke down the barrier so that you could do this. And he was thinking that there was not enough appreciation by the beneficiaries of all of this political revolution. Uh, there was not an appreciation for those who had broken down barriers but you know what that's always true because it's always true and i'm i'm constantly talking to younger women about this that, yeah you know don't don't you you better you know get yourself active and you better stay politically in, engaged because the vast majority of people out there would take every single right away from you as fast as they could if they had the opportunity it just look at the republican platform just look at the republican party 
Um, and the thing is, is they've already, um, in terms of uh, women's health issues, rolled uh, it way back, way, 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 way back, they because have made women it are not paying attention. Virtually impossible to get totally legal procedures, and because or to access totally uh, no. legal medication, no, or to access just regular, ordinary old health care, because for many women, the care they got were from you know like a Planned Parenthood. Uh, that w- that's where they got their um, their yearly exam, the only doctor they ever saw. Um, and because of these harassing uh, state laws that have been extremely successful and passed in, I think, over half of the states, uh, Planned Parenthood uh, offices are closing down left and right. And it's not just keeping women from abortions, it's keeping women Even from breast cancer, them. breast cancer screenings, cervical cancer screenings, birth control access. Thus, I hate to tell these idiots who are doing it, causing more women to become pregnant who otherwise would not have. You want to stop abortion, how about making birth control available? cheap and available and sex education available it's not planned parenthood does a lot of that in the schools you know they go oh, right and that's important because we seem to have a a whole you know because chief among the way things are done these days is that somebody in something called a think tank sits around and makes up science to support any political view that they want they then push all of that made-up science onto people who, like Todd Aiken, end up quoting it back to us. Or, and they thank God he did. Or we wouldn't know that this is what is taught. Right. But now they don't. Now they confuse the difference between contraception and, you know, and, and a, you know, post, uh, um, uh, why am I, what am I thinking? I mean, more of an abortion-type medication. Mm-hmm. And and they're conf- and they're totally confusing that in order to make contraception seem like an abortion. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon they'll have a camera in your bedroom telling you that the only time you can have sex is when you are trying actively to create a child. Do you mean to say that you are having sex? You will, you are having sex uh, when you are not ovulating. Well, yeah, that for me that's a no brainer. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, so that's what happens when we get serious. So we're talking about the serious stuff. I'm just watching three men walk out on a roof way high up. <laughs> You're like my son when he was four playing t-ball. You're in the middle of a sentence, and then you start watching <laughs> something. Start picking daisies out there in left field. Right. <laughs> oh, look, there's an airplane. Flop. <laughs> right. Well, all right. That's it. That is it. And uh, I, my streak is over, but uh, Syria is nigh. I... All right. Well, try and wake up. Maybe you'll, 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 you'll discover it's a beautiful day when you actually come to. You think so? No, probably not, <laughs> but it's a chance. <laughs> There's a possibility. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Susan. Enjoy the humid and uh, sultry air of St. Louis. Yeah, it's okay. It's August and it's just starting, so big deal. Exactly. Big deal. Yeah. All right. Toodaloo. Okay. Bye. Bye. Chocolate milk after you work out. And uh, we'll have uh, Chris Potter here with us tomorrow. I will look forward to that. Lynn Coven Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Coven Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.